Good evening. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in to The Money School. I appreciate you being here so The Money much. School with LaShawn Holland. The Money School with <laughs> the Hollands today because you have both of us here. Uh, this is I'm no longer a special guest. You're, you're always a special guest, babe. Always. I want to be always. the special guest. You're a special guest. You're always a special guest. But thanks again for tuning in. Yep. I want to continue the conversation about Black Wall Street today because you've heard a lot about it, especially since last Monday um, because of the debacle um, of the whole Juneteenth and the president holding a rally down in Tulsa, Oklahoma on the anniversary of Black Wall Street and how upset people have been. But I want to continue the, the conversation in a different route. And so there's been a lot of talk recently around the financial crisis that's going on. I like to say financial change because the word crisis actually means change. Yep. And so the financial change of 2020, which, um, you know, was the beginning of a financial shift and financial change for millions of people in the country, right? And at some point we have to go from riots to what I consider a renaissance movement, All right? right? Go on, from riots to really making rich real in your life, making becoming rich real in your life. And so I just shortened and make rich real, right? <laughs> 2020 so, has been a year, hasn't it? 2020 has been a year. Um, but not everyone will embrace the change, right? True. Not everybody True. will embrace the change. Some will try um, to hold on to the old, archaic, um, outdated financial structures in place wow. since World War II right. um, that no longer works inside of this economy. It ended. And so when we went came into the information age. And so for the past several weeks, we've been discussing the side effects of COVID-19 in the financial markets, right? We've seen, um, we've just had a lot going on. Besides COVID-19 in 2020, we've had the race riots recently. Right. Unemployment numbers have hit 40 over million, 40 million. over 40 That's million right. people. We've seen big stores like JCPenney's, Neiman and Marcus, J. Crew, Pier One, all filed for bankruptcy. The list on. goes on and on. Victoria's Secrets, Nordstrom's is having to close a lot of their stores. And so we've seen stores either file for bankruptcy or they're closing hundreds of locations in the U.S. And so even Starbucks is closing 400 um, locations. And I'm going to plug in if you're one of the people that's mad at Starbucks for uh, <laughs> recently them not allowing their employees to wear their paraphernalia in support of the Black Lives Moment. Then they came back and rescinded. If you're still mad at them and you're a tea drinker, you can always go to Holland and Holland. Um, ENT. ENT.com. Holland and Holland ENT. Holland and Holland ENT. Support a black business. Support a black business. <laughs> Grab one of those behind from Support a black, black business. And so we have. Boom. Boom, we have a wonderful variety of hand blended gourmet teas. That is not a shameless plug. I'm just plugging my business. That's right. Nothing um, shameless nothing about it. Nothing shameless about it. <laughs> and so USA Today, even today, reported that close to 60% of all store closes closures will be mall based. Wow. So we are literally watching or seeing before our eyes shopping malls turn into dinosaurs oh shopping malls turn yeah. into dinosaurs. commercial real estate and, and we've seen it for a while people just yes. get in it's getting it, accelerated it, right this accelerated is, has accelerated yep, and so accelerated. um we've seen the financial shift all around us and so the question is will you shift with it right because it's going to shift anyway it's going to shift anyway <laughs> question is are you going to catch up or fall behind are you going to catch up or fall behind <laughs> hey family how are you Oh, um, only LaShawn looks nice, huh? Hey, family, LaShawn, you look nice. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate it. You she copied nice. off of me. See, I had on the yeah, Born to Multiply t-shirt first. I did. We have Born to Multiply <laughs> tees on. You can also get it at LaShawnHaller.com. Yep. Um, but in our previous money school with LaShawn, we talked about race and economics. Yes. We did that about two weeks ago. A week ago, we talked about bringing back Black, uh, bringing back Black Wall Street 2.0. Yes. And so, in another one, in another vein, we want to be able to be keep that going because there's plenty of conversations to be had around it. Um, 
I've seen some videos in support of it by black people, and I've seen some videos talking pretty bad about it right. um, and, and by black people. That, that's you know, and so and, I've seen both on the spectrum. Right. I was gonna say what we don't want is for this to be a flash in the pan. Right. We, right. we want to continue to push this message because we believe it's vitally important. Right. I think today is day thirteen of the the protest that's going on. We want to do the same thing with this Black Wall Street. We want to continue to push and push and push because the time is now. Because if nothing else, now. the current environment showed us between the pandemic right. and then the way that African Americans are treated um, in society. Right. Let's tired. just say that. We're tired yeah. of it. We're, we're tired of it. Not only just it's time for us to do we're tired different. of the discrimination that happens on the business level. That's right. I'm not sure if you guys know this, but Robin and I actually used to own a company called BLS, which was an asset-based lending company. And so I would have to go to Wall Street in New York often. And... Just about every time I went, I was the only female in the room and the only black female in the room. So you know it made the air really tight in the room <laughs> um, because most of the time when I walked in, I got stares from white males like, what are you doing here? And so um, they don't, you don't, guys don't understand that only banks only lend to 15% of A credit people. And so if you have bad credit, you can just cancel Christmas altogether. And so it's been very difficult and the playing field is not equal. But sure. one of the things that I know for a fact that it's possible to build without um, expecting, you know, Wall Street, meaning the financial district to give us a hand up. That's right. Maybe we can do a, a live on that another time. But with the original Black Wall Street, because I want to stay on topic here, with the original Black Wall Street, um, before it was destroyed in 1921, it was different than how it is now because legal segregation forced blacks to do business among themselves. That's right. And there's a difference between what happened in Tulsa, Oklahoma back in the 1920s and, you know, 1918, whenever it was started, you know, yeah. until it was burned down in 1921, because of segregation, we were forced to <laughs> do business among themselves, right? <laughs> Now we're looking at Black Wall Street, what I'm calling Black Wall Street 2.0, where it's a choice that we are making to do business together. Right. One was by force. This new movement will be by choice. And trust me, some of these places don't really, I mean, they want your money, but they don't necessarily want you. Exactly. So they just like the fact that your money is green, but they will follow you around oh, the store and harass you as if you were about to steal right. when your pure intention was to make a purchase. Was to make a purchase. And so and even on the business side, I told you I've seen, I said, shared with you guys a couple weeks ago how I've had to let go some of the contractors that we were paying very good money to. Um, because it's okay for us to do it's business with them, yep. but it was not okay for them to do business with us. And so I just made a very conscious decision um, that I wanted to spend more time. We were going to do things differently. We were going to do things differently. And That's so right. again, Black Wall Street 2.0 2 is a choice that we're making to do business together. So because we're choosing to keep the black dollar in our communities longer than six hours <laughs> so we can eventually dominate and own an industry in a country Come that we built. Come on now. We built this country so yes, we, we have every right to own not just one industry but several industries Absolutely. but it will take us banding together and making a conscious effort to make that happen. And so... Black Wall Street 2.0, you know, when you look at what they did in the original Wall Street, you know, they saved better and they spent better, Absolutely. right? They were very conscious with their money. Yep. And until we become conscious with every penny that we spend, you will continue to get the same results. And so they had to have the following qualities to be able to make it happen. Robert and I was talking about this earlier that I felt like when I was looking at um, just researching Black Wall Street and, you know, year, I've been following Black Wall Street for years, right? One of my favorite books is called Black Fortunes. I think I mentioned it a yeah, couple sweet. weeks ago. But um, I noticed something that they had. They had three distinct qualities um, the people did that made up Black Wall Street. And the first one being self-discipline. Yeah, and good. so the ability to control 
control, guys, the ability to control one's feelings and overcome one's weaknesses and not abandon progress in the middle of the process. Now, I made up that definition. That's my wow. definition. Wow. Don't like abandon progress. Uh, progress in the middle of the process. And so, so often when we start businesses, even when I have clients, there are times when I have to pull my client's coattail and say, what yeah. are you doing? Right. Like, you know, sometimes... People get frustrated in the process and then they stop and they jump to something else and then that doesn't work. And so they jump to something else and then they get on what I call the entrepreneur's carousel, yeah. right? And they go round and round and round where essentially you're just not giving it enough time to That's work right. to do anything. That's like right. we have been at this for a long time. It took time before, you know, we decades. saw <laughs> decades. And I'm not saying that it will take your time for my clients. Literally, I've had clients that hit seven figures in four years. And so. But that takes self discipline. It and takes commitment. self discipline. Yep. And the second thing that I noticed that they had, again, was commitment. Yep. You said it. And so, commitment, the state or quality of being dedicated to a cause or activity. Right. I am dedicated to Black Wall Street. Even when they stop uh, posting and it's no longer on CNN, it's no longer on MSNBC, <laughs> it's no longer on Fox News, it's no longer being showed as the topic of the day right. when showing the protests and showing the riots that's out here. Will you still be committed yep. to building Black Wall Street 2.0? I saw a post earlier, one of my clients said this, she was like, well, LaShawn, do you think that blacks would be willing to stop buying Prada and Chanel and Louis Vuitton and Coach and, you know, all the designer brands, but we yeah. have been programmed to keep being consumers. That's and right. so this move has to be a very con con um, conscious. conscious move yes. and it has to be a very strategic move. Yep. And so th we're going to need self-discipline. We're going to need commitment. And then you're going to have to have a relentless resolve. That's and right. when I talk about relentless resolve, I just just mean being persistent, being constant, being focused on the process and focused on purpose. Yep. Like you have to be focused on purpose to make this happen. And so they had standards that they were dedicated to in the original Black Wall Street. I would even say trust was big with them because oh, uh, with major. the with the with the the front runners, the forerunners, the trailblazers who started Black Wall Street had to work together, right? They had to pool their money. They had to earn the trust of the business owners coming in because they gave them loans to start their business. Right. They had construction companies, all those things. So trust was a big thing. And we have to get over that in our black community. We've got to learn to trust each other when we're doing business together. Listen, there is enough money out here for, for all of us. For everybody, everybody. to eat. So everybody. let's not yeah, let's not let's not fight against each other. Right. Yep. And so, you know, again, they had standards that they were dedicated to um, in the original uh, Black Wall Street. And so what, you know, when I look at the financial standards that are going to be necessary yeah. for us to make this happen, you know, what financial standards are you willing to raise the bar on uh, in order for us to create Black Wall Street 2.0? This includes myself also. Right. Like we've been so programmed just to be making purchases. Just today, when I went to the grocery store, when I came out, I was like, dang on it. I could have driven 20 minutes more and gone to a black grocery store. But that takes us programming our minds. We have to, yep. we we, be unfortunately, we are a black people who have been programmed not to remember black when we start shopping. Yep. And so you have to be conscious and reprogram your mind to buy black. And so what what are your household financial standards? Right? Mm -hmm. We we teach this um in a program that we have or very on we used to teach it, right? In a program, I think it was in the financial revolution 
program. We yeah. talk about having financial standards. Or you guys used to teach it from the stage. I don't remember. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I've it's been, been doing around. this a really, really yeah. long time. <laughs> but um, what are the financial standards that we, we're we going to have to adhere to? And you can come up with some of your own. And here's just a few for me. But revenue recognition was one of them. Recognizing where your money is coming from and its areas of vulnerability. Yeah. I talked about this before, how if COVID-19 didn't show us anything else, it showed us how vulnerable we were, you know, where our finances were concerned. And so recognizing where your money is coming from and the areas of vulnerability. If you're spending, your out of control spending is an area of vulnerability, then you need to deal with it. And so where are your holes in your money? If you want to participate in the reviving or um, the rebuilding of creating Black Wall Street yeah. 2.0 in your life personally, not just in the marketplace, but in your life personally, you must limit spontaneous spending and plan your spending. Stop yeah. clicking on the ads on Instagram. <laughs> I know the outfits are really cute, but the truth of the matter is that money is going over to China or Korea somewhere. and then Unless it's tied back to a black business, but yes, yes, you're right. Yeah, but I'm talking about the constant ads that you right. see for the most part aren't black businesses. Right. And so you click it on and then when you get it, the item is 10 times too small. <laughs> <laughs> so essentially what you're saying is we need to become cognizant of most every definitely. financial purchase that we make. I just um, last night was online making a purchase and then I just did a Google search who owned the company. Right. And you know what? I saw that it wasn't owned by one of us. So I Googled the same product that I needed, but what black company out there right. manufactured it. Yep. And so it's just that simple. And so, like you know, revenue recognition, recognizing where your money is coming from and where it's going to making room for asset accumulation. You have to make room. You have to get out of debt. It is no longer a freaking option. Yep of whether you should be getting out of debt. Listen, if you can go out and buy a bunch of crabs every week, that is money that could be going towards your student loan debt. True. Or any debt. Or any debt. <laughs> yeah, any or debt any that's debt. not good debt, right? So any bad make debt. wrong. Yep. Get rid of that stuff. When you delay it, it costs you more. You that's spend right. more money in delaying because of interest and penalties. That's or true. interest. You only get the penalties if you pay late. But or interest. And so it's not even a, you know, people just be just lollygagging about getting out of debt. Yep. You know, I'll have people call me, well, I got X amount of savings. That's great. How much debt do you have? Right. And then you have enough money to just write a check and pay the debt off. Ooh, you got a great question here. And I know what your answer is, but I want to ask it so everybody can hear it. So Gladys Brown said, what if you need a vehicle? Do you buy new or used? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> used. And that's a great question, Gladys. Because a lot of people. We just had this conversation. We yesterday. Just had this we conversation talked about this yesterday. yesterday. Yep, but that's um, a great question. And explain to people why you buy used question. versus new. You can buy, find very extremely good deals with buying a, you know, a used car. And the, re used too. the reason why I say buy used because when you buy new, it depreciates almost 20% when you drive it off the when lot. You start it up and drive it off the lot. So on average, a new car, the minute you drive it off the lot, it's like taking $8,000 and throwing it out the window. Yep. Because that's value that is lost because of depreciation. And you'll never get it back. And you'll never get it back. Right. And so I think the last vehicle we bought... It was it had nine thousand miles on it, and we we bought it because it's been a long time since we've purchased a new vehicle. A new, it's been right? a very long, a very time. long I can't time. Even remember. Yep. Most of know, our vehicles are are used, they're used gently used, used, gently used vehicles, yep. and so um, and that's the reason why because new vehicles depreciate so much when you drive them off the lot. Yep. Great question, Gladys. Great question, and so again, make room for assets. Ooh, she said, like, "Would you buy a cash or finance?" Um, it really depends on your financial right. situation. I like going into a dealership and I get my bank to give me a check so I can just buy my vehicle. But listen, here's what I will tell you. Because I don't know your financial situation, I will have to ask you several more right. questions before I answer that. I can only speak for us. I allow my assets to pay for um, the things that it can that the law allows right. me to pay for, right. and so 
I just don't believe in there are some things I just don't believe in financing if you don't have to finance it. But at the same token, your money stops working for you there. Yep. And so if you can take that money instead of taking a lump sum and putting it into a depreciating item, if you can take that lump sum of money and find the asset that is actually, you know, gaining money, you know, what is the eighth wonder of the world? <laughs> Franklin said it compound, yep, compound interest. interest and so yep. if I can find a vehicle an investment that is compounding at a higher rate I can take that lump sum of money because I'm going to be Doing making more business. money yeah. and so it just makes sense to put your money to work for you so again that really de it depends on what you want to do in life I would have to answer you know ask you some more questions before I gave you a solid here's what you need to do with your money and I think the vehicle and I know we need to move on but I just want to say this I think the the vehicle is one area where at least in the African American community we tend to overspend oh listen glad you said that's that. a whole nother Facebook live but I just wanted to put that out there right it and it is. made me think about this is something that that Jay-Z said if you can't buy it twice then you can't afford it then you can't afford it yeah and so I had a mentor teach me this years and years ago. And she says, LaShawn, and it was a white lady. And she says, one of the things in your community is you buy cars way too often. Yep. And it's true. And and so she took me through this exercise. And she was, at the time I was driving the Lexus, I can't remember which one. Um, but we were, yeah. and she, and we looked at how much we paid for the vehicle and at what interest we got it for. And she says, okay, if you were to take the same amount of money and the same interest rate, and you were to take it and invest it over a five year period, this wow. is what you would have. Wow. But when you dump it into a car over a five year period, you actually depreciate out. And so a lot of cases, you're at a negative value. That's right. <laughs> Excuse me, I got choked up. Your car is not worth anything. That's right. And so that money, and you've missed the opportunity for your money to make money. And so it totally shifted how we view buying cars, you know, in this house. And so I would much rather take my money um, and put it into something that's producing me money Absolutely. than to spend it Absolutely. on an item that is depreciating, costing me money and not making me anything. Why? Because I believe personally, if it ain't making money, it ain't making sense. Yeah, I always say a car is only making you money if you're a real estate agent. <laughs> <laughs> well, not necessarily. Or Uber driver now. There are other Uber things driver, that you can other do. other things that you yep. can actually do to make money. Um, from it, we get the right uh, off our mileage with our businesses and stuff. Right. And so, right. but not everybody has a business where Absolutely. they can do that. Not everybody has a business where the lease qualifies for them to write off. I don't right. have a lease. Um, that's a whole nother <laughs> live about life. that too. So maybe we'll do a live <laughs> on cars soon. But anyway, making room for asset accumulation was one of them. Then research for opportunities. Look at the gaps in black ownership in your community and then fill the gaps. And, and I'm not talking about Ponzi schemes here, right? Somebody <laughs> contacted me today. They were um, approached by someone at church. Uh, to put $500 in and in 30 days they get $3,500 back and I was like my dear that is not called an investment that is yeah. called a Ponzi scheme and people go to jail for that and they are notorious for going around in churches um, with Ponzi schemes because unfortunately in the black church we don't research anything we just be believing everything this That's is right. you know I remember one time there was a scheme going around and I approached um, some of the elders who were in it and they told told me I was this was um anyway <laughs> listen folks when just when, redo your research yeah, and when, that's what I when want there's to say. turmoil in the country typically schemes like this rear their ugly head because right. people are looking for opportunities to make money fast to make money fast yep. and just do, go your to, due you diligence. do your due diligence go yep. to the federal trade commission's website and google it uh do a search inside it so you can look at this year's um, Ponzi schemes that are out. If it is not registered with the Securities and Exchange yep. Commission, it is not a bona fide investment in the country. And so, and if you don't know what a Ponzi scheme is, go yeah, Google it. Just I just Google don't want to assume that people know, but yeah. Google it so that you are able to see it when somebody presents it to you and you can call it out. Right. There is no such thing as you put money in and you no. get, you know, triple or quadruple in 30 days. 
You, well, I can't say that because we do make two two hundred percent interest, right. but we're doing it in the market in the with market. companies that are registered with the SEC. That's so right. Right. you know that's the difference. Yeah. And if they you, they tell you to keep it a secret, and then you have to go and recruit other people to get into it, yeah. those are red flags for Ponzi schemes. Yeah. Um, another one is financial development. Learn how to be the master of your money. Ooh. Listen, right now our book Born to Multiply is free. If you just go to born to multiply book.com where it's free and we're giving it away with, I, I'm, I threw in over $300 300, worth of bonuses with this. You just have to pay for shipping and handling. Yep. If you already have it, buy it for someone else. This is a revolution that we're doing. In order for us to bring back Black Wall Street, it's going to require more than just the people that show up on these lives. That's right. You know, and we're trying to educate you, and that's what Lashawn has done. She's talked about her mindset. story. Yes. yes, shift your mindset. So financial development. Learn how to be the master of your money. And it's about taking back control, right? That's if, and you mentioned this. If we didn't learn anything out of the pandemic. It is, we have to learn how to take back the reins, the financial reins in our life because right. there is economic uncertainty. And just as soon as you have a job today, that job can be gone tomorrow. We have 40 million witnesses who can say amen. Most definitely. Yep. And so, uh, full disclosure, be transparent with yourself about your money. Be Absolutely. honest with yourself. And just stop making stuff up in your head about your financial status or your financial state of where you are. Yep. Stop making the stuff up. Be transparent. Full disclosure. And then buy black. And so we were looking, um, just yesterday, I was looking for a black-owned gas station in my area. The closest black, only one came up, and the closest black-owned gas station in my area was an hour and 20 minutes away from me. And so that is an opportunity right there for somebody to buy. How many black-owned gas stations do you have in your area, your neighborhood? Maybe you can purchase one. Yep. And so um, we just when we started looking for crabs yesterday, I Google black-owned crab companies, you know, and I think only one came up that was near me. And right. so these are gaps that we could be filling in inside of the market. That's you don't also have to be Yeah, that's opportunity. And so yep. I said earlier, one of this was research or learn to spot opportunities. Everybody doesn't have to be a Bill Gates. Everybody doesn't right. have to be, you know, a Steve Jobs or a Elon Musk. Listen, if you can produce zippers and buttons, you can become a multimillionaire in the country. <laughs> yeah. Literally, we have a friend who our kids went to school together and she had a light bulb company. She was a multimillionaire. She should supply light bulbs to all of the stadiums and the basketball arenas in the country. You know, and so we're all looking for the next big great thing. No, be consistent with the one thing. Everybody, the riches are in the niches, the right? The riches are in the niches. And so buy black. So we have to train our minds to really buy black. So, and then on the other side of that, what are your expectations for black excellence in business? All right. And so I saw a, a video where a lady, a black lady was really bashing black businesses because she said that they give you bad service. And my thing to her was, don't just throw all black businesses away because you have mm -hmm. one bad experience. Yep. Maybe they don't know. Listen, a person's level of excellence is determined by the exposure that they have had. If you have never been to the St. Regis Hotel, if you've never been to the Ritz Carlton, if you have never been to the Isle of Palms, right, vacation experience before, then maybe the only place you've been was the La Quinta Inn. That's your level of excellence. Maybe you've only been to a Marriott. That's your level of excellence. But the 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 service you get at a St. Regis or the service you get at a Ritz Carlton or a Salamander Hotel is very different than the service that you would get from a courtyard. And so maybe their level of excellence, they don't know. You only know what you're exposed to. Right. And so not everyone has the same level of exposure. And so I believe we have a responsibility as, you know, when we support other black businesses, if their services are not up to level, you don't necessarily always have to put them on blast, right? right? Maybe write an email to the owner of the company and say, you know, a person 
you know, can serve you, these are areas maybe of opportunities for improvement. Mm -hmm. And have a dialogue with them, but you don't just throw the whole business away. Now, they're just still trifling, then you find somebody <laughs> else, because there are people that are going, you can be black or Asian and be trifling. So. Right, that's the, that's the other side of this coin, right, is that right. we have a responsibility as black business owners to operate in a level of excellence. Right, and so... Right? And I know it's based on what you've been exposed to, but be ready to receive that criticism when it comes and don't get offended. Right. Yep. And so a person, again, can only serve you to their level of exposure. And so, again, if you've had better service somewhere else, then possibly contact an owner, contact the management or someone in leadership and make some suggestions on how they can have a better how they can have better service or create a better experience for their customers or their clients. Yep. Even the Ritz Carlton has bad days. I went to the Ritz Carlton in Naples and they didn't clean my room. I had a ring around the tub and I had pubic hair on my soap in my bathroom at the Ritz Carlton. And you had not used it. And I had not used it. Right. It wasn't mine. I was just checking into the room. Right. And so even the Ritz Carlton have their bad days. Yep. Just don't throw everything um, away with it. But again, you know, you have to place yourself in inside of an environment if you want to be a part of Black Wall Street 2.0. And I will tell you that, and then we're getting ready to end, but a lot of times aspiring entrepreneurs, even emerging entrepreneurs, they fail because they fail to get the help that they need to be able to yes. grow. Again, you only know what you know. And so if you haven't had exposure to a business that has been able to build seven and eight figures, you're going to be struggling if you, you don't. It's the law of the league. It's the right? law of the you land. You only know what knowledge. you only know. Yeah. Yes. And so one of the reasons why we even started our program, Born to Multiply, which really has become our signature program. Yes, it has. You know, is because it's the most comprehensive business training and development programs on the market today for aspiring and emerging entrepreneurs who really want to create massive growth um, in their business and in their life. And so when we talk about bringing black blood, Black Wall Street 2.0, this is very important because what happens is if you get the right knowledge, it can accelerate your path. It can save you money from making mistakes and it saves you time. And so you get mm -hmm. to your goal of time freedom much quicker. Yes. And so I know the obstacles that blacks have in building a business. And so the playing field isn't always equal. I can tell you where the landmines are, right? And so... Yep. That Keep doesn't, you from making the mistakes that we made. Right. That doesn't mean that it's impossible. And so I'm a test. I'm a, we are a testimony that building wealth is possible. Mm -hmm. And so when we wrote that program, we wanted to build a step by step program, um, really a plan that shows people what they're doing, how to be able to produce more clients and more income. And so if it's not making money, I said again, it's not making sense. Right. If you signed up to be a part of a multi-level marketing company, Find somebody who's making the millions in the company. <laughs> I get people to contact me all the time because they're frustrated because they don't know how to give you get clients. And Born to Multiply, I teach you how to use what I call your champions to be able to get you more clients. Yep. But hold them accountable. If you're, um, I don't even know because I'm not a part of a multi-level marketing person, but whoever yep. bought you into the business. Whoever recruited you. If they're not yep. training you, if your director is not training you properly. Five years and years ago when I was in college, I sold Mary Kay. Yep. I found out who the top sellers in the country was. And I used, I drove to their house, Gloria Mayfield. I know her personally. She's still around. I know Gloria Mayfield. So guess what I did? I contacted her, right? Yep. And so I started getting training for her. And so listen, find out who's doing it the best and then just contact them. Success for the most part, clues. success leaves clues. Yep. And so, you know, inside of Born to Multiply, how do you get predictable flow of high quality leads. We knew that was a problem in business. Right. Listen, if you're not constantly bringing in new customers or new clients, I don't care what your business is. If nobody was buying Elon Musk cars, listen, they wouldn't be around too <laughs> if long. If your business is not growing, it's slowing. Yeah, <laughs> right, right, right. 
<laughs> and so, you know, being able to give people proven models of developing your products, developing your programs, right. how that's do important. you price your programs? Right. We have a client that's coming on board now who doesn't know how to, I mean, literally, they have thousands and thousands of followers but they don't know how to price, you know, what they're giving them. And so right. learning how to be able to add value and price your stuff and, you know, how do I get clear goals, yeah. you know, financial goals that I can, you know, be able to target and, you know, efficient strategies for someone who knows because we've, we've done it. Right. Right. And so um, where you can add anywhere, be, my clients add anywhere from $10,000 to $50,000 a month in 12 to 18 months. Right. And so, you know, how? But how they're do, willing to do the work. They're willing to do the work. <laughs> they're willing first to invest in themselves Absolutely. and then do the work. Absolutely. And so if you want to bring back Black Wall Street, it's going to require you to do the things that I talked about earlier, but also invest, get the education, get the education yep. so you can be able to build Black Wall Street in your household, yes. you know? And plus, you know, I love Born to Multiply. It's an amazing community and a network of successful, committed wealth, what I call wealthpreneurs. Absolutely. And so this concludes our, um, we're seven minutes over. I really yeah. tried to get down to 30, but. Since when do you try to stay inside of 30? What, what makes try, this try, Monday an exception? <laughs> but anyway, that concludes our conversation of us. Just continue to talk about Black Wall Street because, yep. you know, prayer. Carefully, this is not something that, you know, we just talk about because of the protest that's going on and buying black, you know, I try on our um, business page to post as many black businesses as I right. can. Because I want to be a resource for you guys. So, you know, here, if you love tea, there's a black tea company. You know, if you love coffee, there are black owned coffee shops that's out here. Research them. Um, black, you know, um, hair care, where I get my products for my hair, is a black owned them. company. Yes. yes. And so yep. um, there's black makeup companies. The skincare that I use is from a black woman and so you know i'm really trying to make every effort and then watch what's that show on the netflix we saw that was really good yeah it's done by killer mike i forget the name of it it's something trigger something trigger yeah, it's I, done by killer mike if you research killer mike uh he's a rapper don't let the name uh scare you away but right. he did a very good um episode on just buying black supporting buy black, black business and it just really showed it us was an eye opener. it was an eye opener of yes. how hard it is this is not going to be easy right. it was just for what it exposed were the gaps it exposed the gaps right? like and we have to the, see it as a lot of restaurant owners yes. don't even buy their produce from black farmers that's right you know that's and right. so he was I, trying to find a meal in georgia that was made by a black cook black restaurant who got their um, products from a black farm? Their meats and their vegetables yep. from a black farm. One once he went home hungry for two days. <laughs> Slept on a park bench because he could not find. He could a not black find a hotel. black hotel. That's right. And he was on tour. Yes. He was on tour. Yes. He used a black owned bus company to take him to wherever he was touring. Right. But right. when he got there, he could not find a black owned hotel to stay in. So he slept on the park bench. Right. Now, he was really dedicated. I'm, I'm not that dedicated. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm not sleeping on a. I slept on a bench for Barack Obama at his inauguration. I ain't sleeping on a bench for nobody else. You know, so he slept on a bench because he couldn't find the black hotel. And then he went hungry for two days sure because did. he could not find fat he asked going to guy, Athens Georgia yes Camilla Stanley saw it yes yep, she watched it sure did and he went to he asked the dude where can I get a black restaurant he told him Subway <laughs> <laughs> we'll do the black people thank you LaShonda yes trigger warning trigger warning with Killer Mike yes thank, thank you, you LaShonda, LaShonda. Thank, yep. thank you, LaShonda, for that idea, too. Y'all heard Rob <laughs> Kiyosaki went crazy this week. And so people... Um, Here it is again. People started buying Born to Multiply. So I really want to say thank you yes, for that we idea. It. And thank you for everybody who's been sharing um, about and the And those book. who purchased the book. Thank those you. who purchased the book, yep. thank you. And don't forget, right now, we're giving the book away for free for a limited time. Yes, All you have to do is friends. pay for shipping and handling. So anyway, love you guys. See you next Monday. Thank you for tuning in. Share the video. Yes. Bye-bye. Peace.